Hermetica was put down into a book, but it comes from energies is, is one way of describing it, but it's basically the rules of, of, of creation. The Emerald Tablets actually talk about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. If you actually have a look what it's describing, it actually describes creation, creation on any level. Plato came after, after all of that. Before Plato, you actually look at Pythagoras. Pythagoras is another version of, of Thoth, because um, Pythagoras as well was not a person. He was a concept. So a lot of people think or assume he's a person. He's not a person. And so Pythagoras incorporated a lot of Thoth's teachings. So, yeah, again, and Thoth comes under the different names. Thoth is known in different cultures by different names. He's known in the Chinese culture as the bird man. He's known as Thoth, as you say. That's in the Egyptian mythology. Um, I'm trying to think what other mythology. Is it known in Hinduism as um, Danvantari? So these are the different names, all the same person. Uh, yeah. Have you actually read the Heretic or is it something you've read through? It's copying my work, but uh, I'll probably look into it in the future. But I am at the moment doing the Tablets of Thoth. I've done yeah. the first two chapters. Uh, one of my patrons requested it, so uh, this is for them. But it talks about Amenta, the city of Amenta. Do you think yes. The, um, to me, it sounds like some sort of Ag Ag Agatha, you know, in Hollow Earth. It sounds just the same sort of place. So can you tell us a bit about that, what, what you think that is, Amenti? Okay, the walls of Amenti are before you get into Agatha. They are on the, on the, on the outskirts of Agatha. They're not actually part, they're, they're within Agatha, but they're not part of Agatha. The halls of Amenti, another name for the halls of Amenti is the Hall of Mirrors. I don't know how far you've dug into it, how far you've gone into it. And the Hall of Mirrors, I mean, this gets extremely interesting when you start now tying all of this up. You start realizing how it ties in with our modern day science or maths that NASA is studying. Uh, we start talking string theory. So our mentee or the Hall of Mirrors, what actually happens? Let me explain. When, when a person dies, they, there's, few, there's a couple of ways you can get to our mentee. Under normal circumstances, a person dies, and if they are not qualified to go to a higher plane, what will actually happen? They will go to the gate. Let's call the pearly gates. This is this is the same concept. You'll go to the pearly gates, and some dude there will check you out and say, "Okay, are you qualified? Are you not qualified to move on to a higher place or a different dimension?" If you're not qualified, you enter our mentee, and our mentee is another loop. The easiest way to understand our mentee is there's a loop. So I call it the loop de loop. So what actually happens is in modern day maths, we, you've heard of string theory. Yeah. Now string theory has got different shapes, different designs, different models. There's not just a single double loop or loop that falls into itself. I just call it loop de loop in, in, in many different forms. Mm -hmm. And that's what they call a closed string. So it just loops in on itself. That is the hall of mirrors. People think they've gone to heaven. They have not gone to heaven. Is They're just in a physical place. Is this um, like in the crust of the earth or is this a not a non-physical place? No, it's, it is also physical. It right. is three dimensional. Okay. What actually happens when you die, there's two levels to it. You're going to go in on, a, on what people think is heaven. So you're going to move off on another dimension. Remember, there's two dimensions. Earth, in a way, is also the same type of thing. We keep on, let's call it repeating a life. Another word for repeating a life is called reincarnation. So that's the difference between a menti or the Hall of Mirrors and entering Argatha. Argatha is, a, is an open string. It leads off to somewhere else. A menti is a closed string and it loops back in on itself and you come back. Who's Foff in your eyes then? Is he the same person as Hermes Trismegistus? You know, Hermes Trismegistus, if you listen to the word Hermes Trismegistus, it tells you there's three of them. And the three of them tell you they're also non-human. So it's, it's, again, his system. When you look at what, what the Emerald Tablets of Thoth are all about, they define creation on any level. And it's written on the Emerald Tablets are supposed to be written on a, on a stone that cannot be destroyed. If you look at the color of the emerald, it's a green, and 
it, that as well should tell you it's to do with creation. But it, it and the fact that that, that stone cannot be destroyed tells you it comes from another dimension. So yes, Thoth is from another dimension. Hermes Trismegistus, who was taught by um, Thoth, because he was his student, so he was taught by him. So it says it's not the same person. You know, have you ever had any contact with anyone from the Gatha or in your earth? Or do you know of anyone who has? When you say contact, Andrew, there's, there's different ways of contacting. I'm in touch with my people all the time. When I talk of my people, they're from different levels. They're not from a single level. I, I've got people who are from more than one dimension, different dimensions. I've got different people. Do you know, as you talk about the Pleiadians, that they were in a physical form, is that a way that they travel from the Pleiades? Because that would be, apparently, that's the best. You, you wouldn't be able to travel in a physical body that, that long a distance, that fast. So, in a way, it's like Avatar. They transfer their consciousness into some sort of, like a, like a ghost sort of thing. And, and that travels to Earth, and then they incarnate into a human. Is that, is that possible? Because uh, I did a video recently about Jesus Christ. Um, like every time you see him, there's doves about uh, when he was born. And, and it, it correlates to what the Christians believed was the doves were associated with the Pleiades. This is where he came from. Or was he incarnated with a Pleiadian? He's from Pleiades. Um, the way to view it, probably the easiest way for me to describe it is like your dreams. Now, in your dreams, you are real and that is you as well. But you don't have a physical body. So that could be, as you're talking about, that level that you get incarnated through the Pleiadians come through. Let's just on a level of words. Not exactly like us, but let's just talk at a level of words. That dream that you're having is you from the Pleiadian, is you from another dimension. That dream then will manifest. Because if you think about it, a dream is not conscious thinking. This, this is it's very important that we understand what's the different dimensions or different levels of, of existence or consciousness here. When you, when you are not conscious using this brain, you're on another dimension. And this is part of what meditation takes you into. Meditation allows you to access another body, which is coming down from the Pleiadians to earth in reverse. So we can exit our bodies by not thinking consciously. And talking to the Pleiadians and going to their world. It's like when you're in a dream, you will be talking with other people. Yeah. Okay, dream is a very mundane system, but it's just, I'm just trying to make the point. So there's that, you can go anywhere. It's not just the Pleiades. You can go anywhere in the star system, right? Yes. Talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I do think you are, to be honest with you. I think you've mentioned Hollow Earth before, and I do think that they have gone into Hollow Earth. So can you tell us a bit about that? What, what do you know? Uh, you know more than you let on. I am not human as well. So, yes, I come from another place. I come through Pleiades. It's very, import it's very important that the wording that I say is heard properly. I come through Pleiades. Before Pleiades, I come from another place called Lyra. Yeah, I've heard of Lyra, yeah. Okay, I come from Lyra through Pleiades. Do you mean, because I know in the story of the Pleiadians, uh, they came from Lyra, moved to the Pleiades, and then came to Earth. Is that correct? Is that... Yes, and I'm one of the offshoots. Pleiades split into different groups. I'm from one of the renegade groups. If you really want to know, I go to be, I mean, I can trace my, let's call it my ancestry or the path through which I come. I can trace my ancestry to before times Earth, the Earth time, before time existed on Earth. So how did, how did they end up splitting up? Uh, how did they, was it a civil war or something like that? When did that happen in Earth time? Andrew, when you look at it, Pleiades, Pleiades is not... Even here on Earth, we always, nobody can agree with anybody. And we assume that the Pleiadians, because they are more advanced or they're higher dimension or they're a superior race, as if there's no problems there. Anywhere you go within our galaxy, our universe, 
there is always people who've got difference of opinions. They talk of a federation. No matter where you talk of, why do we have a federation? If you think about what is the point of a federation, a federation is no different than what we have as United Nations today. So if you've got a United Nations, that tells you already, listen, yeah, there's a possibility of a split that they had to unite. So it's the same with the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians are different people. I mean, we're talking not just different people on a single planet. We're talking different planets. Yeah. There's the seven main sisters or the seven doves, as you talk about. They're entirely different groups of people. Okay. So, yeah, they did have what you call as infighting. And then there's two agendas that run there. There's two main agendas. The Pleiadians don't have a single agenda. We, we always wrap Pleiadians up as just having one agenda. No, they don't. There's basically two agendas that run on the Pleiadians. Enki and Enlil's civil war, what they had. And then um, one apparently went to uh, Nibiru, and then one apparently was banished in her earth um, and became, is it, is it Moloch? Do you think he could be Moloch? And Abraham has something to do with the Anunnaki, doesn't he? The father. Hmm. Moloch is not a, is not, a, as you say, he goes from Agatha, but he comes before Agatha. He actually comes before three dimensional earth. Moloch, Moloch is from what we classify as non form. So he comes before creation. So yeah, he's a pretty powerful dude. Um, he, he's not, and a lot of people understand him to be the owl as well. Some yeah. people understand him to be the bull, but some people understand him to be the owl. He's not actually an owl. An owl is only the, the concept because of how we would see him in his form, although he's non-form, he comes from before form. He's actually not an owl. He's actually non-form. And the only way that the people could describe him because of that, um, he, he's frequency. So he doesn't actually have form. And the best way they could describe it was when they had a look at the they call it the outline or the frequency. When you see cymatics and you see the waves in how they flow or form, in that way, he looked like an owl. He's not an owl. He's vibration. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't actually have a physical body. The closest they brought is a physical body, and he looks like an owl. It's not actually correct. Right. He so actually people, doesn't have a body. People um, sacrifice children to him, don't they? Can, how does that yeah. work? What would that do for him? Andrew, I don't know if you've seen uh, what's going on with the whole world at the moment. We talk about stem cells. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen stem cell, yeah. stem cell theory is like the big rage at the moment. Well, what is stem cell theory all about? It's about taking some young cell, putting it into your body and rejuvenating yourself. So what they were doing is, yes, there is no, they were doing what we're doing now. It's just about getting those young cells to keep growing their bodies, keep them young. No difference. Right. But, but why, do, why does he need that then if he's um, like vibration? It does it, he doesn't need a physical body. So how come he needs to live? No, he doesn't need it. That's, that's the mistake people think. They think that we're offering it to him. No, we're not offering it to him. We're offering it to him and saying to him, for this, please give me something in return. But what they don't realize is like we were talking of, of Helen of Troy. We were talking of Diana. We're talking of Gaia. All those things, what is actually happening is we're saying we'd like to learn the secrets of creation. Now, if you could learn the secrets of creation today, if you could master... The, the tools of creation, you would create youth or anything new, spring. You would create anything young, anything vibrant, anything vital. So what, what people are doing is they're saying, all right, I'll give you this child. And then Moloch has the laboratory or whatever he has, and he injects it. So the, the person finds, whether he steals, whether he hijacks, whether, however they obtain this child. Yeah. And it was simply, that's their their ticket to say, can I have the cells of this person and put it, would you please put it into me? It's all they're doing. Okay. So okay. they're yeah. not offering it to my life. A lot of sacrificing as well, didn't they, with children. And if you it's look at, like what I was talking about before, about the green man, um, yeah. and, and if you look at the Druid religion, was all about nature, wasn't it? And this green man, these green men be related to some sort of, um, like you say, the reptilians or anything? No. Sounds a bit weird how they're telling us that they, they worship this green man. Osiris, he was always depicted with green skin. So, 
I mean, you'd be silly not to correlate all these together, wouldn't you? And say, well, why are they all green? What's, what's this green? When you look at the flag of, Isla, of Allah in Islam, it's shaped like a snake and it's a green flag. And, and Islam's a lot of green, you know, they, they use green a lot in the flags and everything like that. Uh, so, I mean, you've got to start looking and thinking, what are all these people talking about green and what the emerald tablets are green again? Andrew, if you think about it, as you said, it all goes back to nature. And if you think about it, what's the, what's the represent, representation or what does green represent? Just think logically. It represents new growth. Yeah. New growth in another way simply means creation. And if you think about it, what are they doing with stem cells at the moment? They're creating. They're getting new anything new so this is why it's even tied with soth the, the emerald tablets of soth again you've got the green so all of this whole green idea gives us anything about new so this is why they're also talking of a new energy coming in which 2025 is now the new in the initiation they've known about this for for many hundreds of years the initiation of the world is coming up in 2025 Mm -hmm. So again, you have to look and you have to start thinking, okay, so the world is going to start rejuvenating. We're going to start getting a different type of world. There's a new world coming in. Yes, there is. Yeah. But it's yeah. not just negative. It has got a lot of positive. It's going to have a lot of creativity brought in. So creativity is another aspect with green as well. It's not only that. It's not only the fact that, um, that it's green. and it's, I mean, when you look at the sign of Allah, it's shaped like a, like a snake with a crown above it and a sword. And then when you look at some of the things what Allah said, Allah is the greatest deceiver, the serpent, the snake, and the horrors of Islam. This is what it says in the Quran. The Quran says Allah is the greatest of all deceivers. Due to this verse in the Quran, Muslim teachers agree that according to Islam, the Muslim God Allah can be a liar. But then you get the Wiccans as well. They believe in a green man. And, and they're about... Uh, devil worshipping and, and things like that so okay deceiver and liar are not the same word right right so to 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 deceiver is a correct word but deceiver doesn't mean a negative to deceive something is another way of saying hidden so a lie and something that's hidden is not the same thing so yes allah if you want to talk of of the islam faith being the deceiver what we're just talking of occult sciences so when it looked like he was talking in one way, you start realizing, but actually it's got a double meaning. So now you start hunting, and this is where you start talking the Atlant, the, the um, Emerald Tablets of Thoth. To the average person who reads it, they're going to take it literally. So that would be the one level, and you could say, well, they deceived because they would, didn't take it literally. Whereas you've got the other people who understand the mystical aspect of it. The mystical aspect or the occult aspect would be the truth. So opposite of truth is deception. So it's just the different levels. It's, it's, it's relative to one's consciousness, which level are you going to grasp? So it, it's deceive is not the same as lie. I, I, th that just needs to be made clear. People would, would like to, th the mundane people would think, yes, it's a lie because they're doing something else. They're achieving different results, like magic, like stem cells. They're achieving different results. Yes, they are, because they're using different tools. They're doing a different level, a different consciousness of things. They certainly will achieve a different result. And then they think, well, the book is lying because we're not achieving the same results as them. No, they're just using a different level of consciousness. And it's up to many people now. Many people are ready. They, they are in a position now where they can elevate themselves. They can actually start tapping into this mystical science and start seeing the real the reality or the truth or the mystical stuff that's going on around us for the others who are the baby souls coming in they're going to say no they're deceiving us yeah you can say that there was another guy as well in in the in the quran called kinder and he was uh is a name in the quran as a righteous servant of god possessing great wisdom or mystic knowledge he was always shown with green skin as well. I'm just getting that out there so uh, we can move on from that. What did you say? His name was Pindar. It's called K-H-I-D-R. So it's Kindar or something like that, or Al Kinder. Magic. Yeah, yeah. What we call magic. Yeah. Us, us normal people, what we call magic. Yeah, that green is an, is an entrance into another world, Andrew. 
So yes, while we call them shapeshifters, while we call them lizards, while we call them these green monsters, Andrew, they've got mystical secrets, mystical sciences, mystical knowledge. They're scary. Is the, do you know of any connection between Islam and Masons? Because Masons have a lot of um, crescent moon symbolism in their mythologies and in, in their signage. It's just on the aprons, everything of crescent moon. Do, do you think there's a bit of a connection there? I'm trying to think what they call the, the Islam group of Masons. Yeah, um, the Mus Muslims. They have the Muslim on on the head, don't they? And they have like um, a finger hat. Fez, that's fez, the one. That's it. It's called a fez, yes. <laughs> when you look back to the the stars and the moons, as you say, a lot of different philosophies have it, not just the Masons and not just... Andrew, when you look at what they're doing, there's, there's different levels here. We're talking of mystical arts. So, yes, we're talking of magic. We're talking of supernatural powers yes it's there it exists but it's not for the masses it's not for everybody even in in either of those philosophies or either of those paths that they take you'll get the masses who are not aware of the real stuff um there there is deeper stuff and it's for very few who actually qualify and you can't qualify by just going through the ranks of any of these different sects or schools or whatever you want to call them, mystery schools. You, you actually have to be qualified by being able to actually visibly or physically show that you can master or handle some of these tools that you've got. So, yeah, that, that's dealing with magic. That's dealing with, with, I don't like to call it dark arts. There's obviously you can use it for bad. You can also use it for good. Um, creation generally is understood to be good, but you can create some nasty things. I mean, you'll see the werewolves and we'll see some of these stories, children's books, um, children's movies, children's horror movies, where some of these people create monsters to, for their own ends. It's still creation. So, yeah, it's a matter of being able to understand and use mystical arts. Yes. Hollow Earth is not a single place. This is what a lot of people also don't realize. Hollow Earth is not just a single place. We've got the basic clans down there. We've got the different people, the different areas, um, exactly like the continents. If you look at the, a lot of some of the maps, you've even shown a map where you've got the basic four rivers. Yeah, um, yeah. It's basically an overlay of Earth because that's why, again, that's where the as above, so below principle comes in. Are, are they, maps, are they, have you seen the Nazi maps of Agatha, aren't you, the inner Earth? Are they um, accurate? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. And then there's the different cultures or the different clans that are actually in these different areas. Yeah. So, but yeah, you've got... Is there got... any wars going on down there or is it all peaceful? Oh, yes. I say because the Lost Tribes of Israel are supposed to be down there. Moloch's supposed to be down there. And then yes. you've got the descendants of the Germans and you've got some Nazis that are supposed to be down there and all sorts. So there must be a bit of fighting going on. Especially the, the tribes of Israel and the, the Nazis. Yeah, the ancestors of the Germans, um, they are the people who, who birthed the Germans, yes. I thought the Borderlanders, haven't they? The Borderlanders are, I think that's what you call them, the Borderlanders. That came up in one of my videos, I think. But again, Andrew, it's not just one tribe or one clan or one group. There are different groups of them. So while we always assume they're one people, no, they're not just one people. There's a group of, the, there's different peoples within that one species or that one clan or that one type of people. People that used to live on Earth that have moved down into, uh, that have created societies in the tunnel systems and stuff, isn't there? That's come afterwards. The, the Germans on Earth came from there originally. This is why they, you'll actually see they're a different mentality. I mean, when you look at who's on the, on the throne currently with the Germans, um, you've got to ask yourself, if they're a different mentality. And yes, they are. And then you look at, you've done videos many months back of the Khazars. That's yet another clan of people, and they're also from inner earth. So they're actually, they're actually the, the, the forefathers of the people here on earth. So we assume that it's some of these people that ran away into inner earth. No, it's the other way around. They came from inner earth and started populating for a reason. Those people here on the surface. Right. Right. So no, they haven't run away. They've, they've come from there. 
And then you've got the Admiral Bird um, story of flying discs coming and attacking him, didn't you, and, and all that. And then uh, German-speaking people pulling up at the side of him, saying, like, you better get out of here. And I, I don't think the Germans were working with the Nazis, like the, the Pleiadians, whatever you want to call them, I don't, the aliens. I, don't, I think they were just stopping a mass slaughter. The Germans had already surrendered, and they turned up to say, look, you're not going to take, you know, wipe these people out, you know. Andrew, you've got, to, let's call it, although they might appear like they're actually fighting, you do get crowds that are actually working with each other. So this is what you're saying is so confusing. When are they like just against each other? And then who's actually working with each other? And we can't always tell the difference. And these are the different factions, if you want to call it. You've got, so you've got different degrees of the far left and the far right. And in between, you've got different sections. And so this is where we can't tell the difference. So the thing is, on, on, for us on the outside, we look at them and we can't tell which ones they are. But there's an order inside there. They are, some of them appear to be fighting each other, and some are. And you'll get those that are actually working for working with each other. So yes, both both extremes are happening. This is this is also what get, makes it so complicated. We assume that there's one agenda running through. For example, Hitler. We'll talk about him in this situation. We assume there was one agenda running through him. No, there wasn't. There was a, more than one different agendas being pushed at the same time. And this is why you'll always get spies and double spies. That's it on on the. The, the one side where they're trying to find information out. But in actual fact, there was more than one agenda being pushed through with that war. I find it strange because he was allied with Stalin and you'd have thought they was been mortal enemies, wise communist and, the, you know, and then you start seeing that like, they were working together a bit at first and then, um, and then it looked like when the when when the bankers in Germany and all that realised that Hitler wasn't going to win this war, when America started getting involved and and all that, it's like they started to stop funding him, you know, to stop backing him, and then Stalin did the same, and it looked like because they did that, then because because Hitler weren't killing Jews at the beginning of the World War Two, they weren't like just getting them all out. It was only when they started not giving him money and 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 all that, and it's the same with Stalin. He only went to war with Stalin when Stalin weren't supporting him and and. They were allies anymore. Andrew, there was different things going on at the same time. There wasn't just one thing going on. And this is, we're not even told that the history books that we find, the stories that we find, Andrew, they are dealing with, we're, we're dealing with different levels of technology. We're not dealing with just one level of technology. There's technology. I mean, those UFOs, we've got um, free, free energy was also known back then. It's, it's common knowledge to a lot of those people. Then there's, you've got other people who are, we talk of them, the, the, the earth worshippers, the, the Wiccans, the, the Gaia people. Uh, we've got that, that different agenda. And then you've got the power hungry and the, the technology advanced people. And again, there's different groups of technology that's actually running presently on this planet even. We don't have just one set of technology. We've got different types of technology here on planet Earth. And there's stuff that's still not public that's controlling what's going on right now in the skies.